everybody, we are back. It is Safe to Launch, favorite is podcast, favorite is channel, favorite is everything. We are back. As you already know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the like button if you like it. Hit the dislike button if you don't like it. Leave a comment if you like it. Leave a comment if you don't like it. Also, follow us on Twitter at the March on NFL for me, at mholder95 for a match. And, of course, Panda Subs discount code TDF for 35% off. So today uh, we're looking at uh, some day two prospects or second round. We're, we're looking at pick 44 today. We're looking at pick 44. Um, so like maybe some guys that may, might have first round buzz right now or and then, you know, have a chance to fall or, you know, the, earlier in the you know, have first round yeah. buzz early in the draft process and are falling or guys that are like, you know, like centers that are, you know, I would say tackles that are converting to guards and, you know, guards fall kind of at the 44 range too. And, you know, the Raiders could also, you know, move around and do some things to trade up um, for that. <clears throat> so we're looking at those guys today. So I'm looking at Graham Barton from Duke and Matt is looking at Nate Wiggins from Clemson. Now, um, what are your thoughts on Nate Wiggins? Yeah. I mean, I think as far as like the draft projections go, he'd probably be, I know I've seen him like as high as like 13 or whatever in some places. And then uh, as low as like 20 something. And I think a bleacher report, he's even lower than that in like the forties in that second round category. Mm -hmm. um, so a little bit more ambiguous about where he ends up. We'll see. Maybe, maybe he gets a boost out of the, out of the coming out of the combine, but um, definitely a guy who's like a little bit lighter on, uh, on the lighter side, which I think a why. Some people are down him. Not really a willing run defender at all, I would say. Uh, there were a few reps when uh, he was even lined up in the box and like didn't even move. <laughs> it was kind of funny, but um, <laughs> yeah. So That's because hilarious. of the because of his size, you know, not going to be somebody that you can really count on and effort wise too uh, that you can count on against the run. And then too, like he'll struggle with the uh, against bigger guys at the top of the route sometimes. Um, but Got a few clips of him going up against guys like uh, Johnny Wiggins, who he's given up quite a bit of size to, and you know, held in his own in contested catch situations. So, part of me wonders if it's a little bit of an effort kind of type of thing, but definitely a, a good player with some good route recognition um, and some good movement skills, fluid hips too. That's one thing that we'll see a lot in the in the clips we see. We're going to take a look at. Uh, that's good. I'm, I'm interested in Nick Wiggins because I've really never watched him, but I've heard yeah. good things. I know uh, my boy Derek likes him so. Gotcha. He, he's, he's a he's a fan of Wiggins, but uh, I looked. I watched Graham Barton. Barton is a play tackle at Duke, right? Um, but he is he look he has short, short arms. His arms are very short. He looks like he's a guard just by his stature and the way he plays. Even when you know, even when his he gets into his uh, pass protection sets, he doesn't look natural as a tackle. But you know, he's strong as hell. Probably he's gonna bench a lot. Kind of I was like talking about with JC Latham. Dude's a monster. Um, we're gonna watch number nine from Louisville get assaulted for most of this uh, <laughs> show. So um, he could have called the cops. So, uh, but that's what, that's what Barton is. I mean, Barton's that type of guy. He could. He's a little bit. Uh, I would say why he has to move to guard in center. You're gonna see that because he's, he's not that very athletic enough to play guard to play tackle in the NFL for me. Um, and. and yeah, but you get, you have to move him inside. But I, I think he can. It, you move him there, he's fine. He'll be fine. He'll, he'll understand it. I think he'll figure it out. And he has the the get off and the power for it. So, um, before before we get into it, you know, we talk about for the show. There's nothing to talk about. But I remember something. Um, Daniel Jeremiah gave out his trade picks for going from thirteen to three. I haven't talked to you about this. We talked about this on the Friday show, but you know, I have this little. So I mean, this graphic. For, okay. For, I got this. this is cool. So we can do this up. So from 13 to three, according to NFL.com, you'd have to give up 13, 2025, 20, third, 2025, 20, first, 2026, 20, first. Are you doing that, Matt? I, I still need to like, I don't know. Like, I think Jaden Daniels is a good player, but I don't know if he's worth like mortgaging that much. I mean, that's what put, can you put that back up against? All right. It was what two first round picks plus the one to take them. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. and, then, and then an extra third. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I still get paused. I'm not like completely sold on a guy like Daniels. I'd almost rather see them like try and trade up to get ahead of the Falcons at eight and maybe go after JJ McCarthy, assuming that price tag is lower. But mm -hmm. not to say that I like McCarthy more than Daniels. Just that's just, I mean, essentially, is Jaden Daniels worth taking? We're spending three first round picks on is, I guess, my my question, right? Because you're spending this year's, next year's, and year after that plus another third round pick. That's that's where I get a little bit of 
hesitation. Like if we're talking about Drake May or 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 uh, Caleb Williams, I think I might be able to push it a little bit more. But yeah, I don't know if I'm just sold on Jaden Daniels that enough at this point in the in the process to give like the stamp of approval on it. So, so what if what if it's like this though? What if it's you just trade up three and you take any quarterbacks left over? I mean, that's kind of the plan if you do that, anyways, right? I mean, if you trade up to three like in March. You're taking whoever the last, the third best quarterback is to you, anyways, right? So, yeah. what, what if that is? Because you know, right now, I mean, there is buzz that maybe Ambiguity, Daniels could, yeah, yeah, you know, could could jump Drake May. You know, is it just trading up to three and just sitting there and taking whoever you want to take, or it's it was more about trading up to one for me and then taking like Jay Downs, and then I would be very <laughs> upset. And I talked about that yeah. too you know, for a while. I, I would be upset with that. That just that would be stupid. But um, it, going up to three and kind of taking the leftover, I don't know. I, I guess I guess it's kind of a how they That's feel. That's kind of but, where I'm at too. Yeah, yeah. Like if it's it went like, like if you're talking about that haul for like the number one pick where you get your guy, like then I'd almost be a little bit more sold on it than taking the trading up that much to go get the third pick and like be still be at the uh, like discretion of the two teams that are drafting in front of you that's where i get a little bit hesitant yeah and i kind of see yeah. where you're where, where you're coming from a little bit of like do they really want to mortgage the guy or do they really want to spend that much on a guy that that isn't going to be the top quarterback in the draft and might not even be their first choice that's right yeah get. exactly because that's the thing like it, it, if you're going to trade up like that, like the Niners did, the Niners they took Trey Lance, right? Because they couldn't right. take, uh, uh, they could they could have took Justin Fields, but they couldn't take uh, Trevor Lawrence or whatever. They traded up to three to take <laughs> Trey Lance, or I guess whoever the third guy left over was. So um, that that was kind of what they did with that. And I don't know if the if the Raiders do that and they just sit there, that's kind of the weird look for it too. And, and I, I agree with you. It's kind of like you should probably just try to jump the Falcons and get like JJ McCarthy or something like that. But we'll, we'll see how this goes, man. If they, yeah, if they get crazy. Well, it, 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 it seems for me, Matt, I'm just saying that just if they trade up to one and take Jaden Daniels, I'm just gonna be a little upset about it. You know, I just, <laughs> I mean, where are you at right now? Are you, uh, I know before you were wavering, are you, Caleb, Caleb Saul, number one, and then oh, yeah, Caleb, Caleb's way before uh, Drake May. It's just, I just, he just, I don't know. He's, he scares me. That's all. I'm, yeah. he's, he, he just, he, that's the thing. Like, I see the upside of it, right? Mm -hmm. I see the high level throws. I see all that. It's just, you know, how he handles pressure and just how he reacts to it. Uh, it, it's it's weird, like because I even saw Doug Farrar, who works for uh, um, Touchdown USA Wire today. Yeah, uh, yeah, does um, stuff for Greg Cosell. He said that he's either going to get you a Super Bowl or get you fired, and that's kind of <laughs> that's exactly how I feel about Drake May. <laughs> that's exactly how I feel about him, and I think that's how I think some. And I think he still might, if he has a good process, which he, he has to have his good interviews and all that stuff. He'll probably still go. Before in front of Daniels just because the talent is just crazy. I think it's, he's way more talented than Jaden Daniels as a quarterback. I mean, yeah, Daniels is a running ability, but the thrower is who it is. But um, he, also, he also has a chance to fall, I think. I think he might yeah. – he has he does have a chance to do that um, both ways because I think Jaden Daniels is going to just come in as more reserved veteran guy. You know, again, I don't know. I don't know what the commander is going to do, but we'll see. This could be an interesting process for Drake May. Um, I mean, he might. I mean, I doubt he'll go one, but there's, there's always that shot for that too. Yeah, for sure. I'm curious, man. So, I don't know. For some reason, when you said like the Doug Farrar quote, my brain immediately went to like Josh Allen type of quarterback, where like it's just one extreme or the other. Like when we were talking about Josh Allen, I know there are different skill sets coming out of college. Like, it's like yeah. all right, this guy could be the next John Elway, or he could be like the next Jamarcus Russell or something like that. Just he's the the spectrum is so wide where it's like. If he can't fix his fatal flaws, like, yeah, you're again, you're going to be getting fired, or you're going to be looking like, or you're going to be riding his coattails and and uh, having a, a successful career. So, yeah, yeah man, because because when he, everything is great for him and his like his feet are set and he throws the football, there's really, I mean, Caleb's better throw the football than him, but uh, I mean, 
in a long time. You haven't seen that many people throw the football better when his feet are set from a clean pocket. It is a thing of beauty, and he just throw dime after dime after dime. And then he, he even though he does throw, throw a lot of those off, off platform dimes, it's just there's so many dimes from Drake May. That's why you can you can kind of get yeah. masked in, into it, and then you kind of miss the flaws because there's just so many dimes. And that's yeah. why he, as you can see it on Twitter people making five minute clips and stuff like that because you can do that. But I could do it the other way. Is if you if you wanted to be a hater, and then that's the thing. Like, uh, it, it's it's just more about when he handles pressure and his accuracy just kind of just goes Dibs. awry. Yeah, because one big thing with him is the Miami game. They blitzed the hell out of him, and the ACC followed after that. And I was like, you know, let me check out some stats and kind of see if that actually matched the film that I saw. And he had like six games of seventy percent completion percentage, and then he played Miami, who blitzed the hell out of him, and then it was like fifty percent like three times after that because teams started doing that too. So that's why I'm a little worried. But then it goes back to, is it Phil Longo and that stupid offense they run? So yeah. that's why I don't call it. It's hard. That's why I, yeah, it's, I could be it's terribly tough. wrong. Yeah. And I think too, like if you can get a good offensive line, like then obviously you can help it out. But the Raiders needing three new starters <laughs> could make things difficult. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, so let's get into that. Uh, so, of course, we start off with some uh, run game here for Graham Barton. He's right here, Mr. 62. This, uh, this big fella, you kind of just look at him and kind of tell he's not really a – it looks like a tackle. You just see these other tackles. See this, this guy's build arms. You, just, you see Graham Barton. He's yeah. kind of just – yeah. <laughs> you can tell the difference, right? They, so, put it this way. Oh, sorry. Back it up for a second. Go. Put it this sorry. way. Uh the right tackle, ha they both have their arms on their quads about and look at mm -hmm. where the right tackle's elbows are. <laughs> Just to show you the difference in arm length. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. The right tackle's got to create room for his arms there. <laughs> All right, you see here, it's the pure power, but I do want to show something. I'm going to highlight something earlier that you see. He, he doesn't have the greatest hand usage. See where his hands are? He's definitely a bear hugger, but he's so powerful. That he's just going to move this guy and just throw him on the ground. <laughs> yeah so um you're not gonna see like the cleanest technique from him that's why i think he could he he'd probably end up being a second round pick and be there at 44 but he is just a monster and just moving people so you see him here again see the hands are kind of outside right and even nine gets inside right and gets his hands inside but you know the pad level that that barton has he's the lower man and he's just more powerful he just rises up and just throws the guy in the ground <laughs> <laughs> leverage leverage man it, and it, it's this is abuse man he abused this guy a lot um here you get against number nine again uh, just moving him constant movement you see here even like even waits for him to commit and fire inside and then still comes and grabs him because he knows that the counter is coming back side yeah, it's a very smart play there too. But I, 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 I'm you just I don't know what number nine did to him. I don't know <laughs> if they know each other. They they they're best friends from high school or something. He just wanted to punk his friend. I don't know. This is just it, was, it felt personal. It felt personal here. So here's here he is again against number nine again, and he just <laughs> throws him into the ground. It's the ability to finish too, like putting guys in the ground, keeping his legs go going, like. That's that stands out already too. Yeah, know? and it, and this time he has his hands inside. We he has his hands inside. You are not going anywhere. <laughs> and that's just how powerful he is, man. And that's so why I think the transition to guard be pretty easy for him. He gets his hands inside, just to drive and driving his legs, keep his legs moving. Boom. <laughs> so I, I don't I, just, I don't know what he did to number nine. I don't know, but the <laughs> must have said something about his mama. <laughs> said something. <laughs> All right. Uh, Here's another one. He's against uh, number nine again. No, actually, actually, this is him going to the space. Um, you kind of see he can't he can't do it, but he, he can do this. But that if it's more of a guard going into space and a tackle, you can just tell. It's, I know it's a slow motion, but you, you'll see that you'll see a difference on the screen uh, later on. I kind of show that, and then we're doing some pass pro stuff. Here's another one. In the run game, just moving somebody and throwing them on the ground. Constant. It looks pretty cool. Constant movement here. Yeah. Yeah, it's just 
this is just a highlight reel of pancakes, man. I just <laughs> <laughs> there's so many of them. Here he gets number nine again. <laughs> He's just gonna push him all the way out of the way onto the ground. Just pancaked him for a touchdown. And that goes six. You can see exactly where this run play goes. You see it always the lowest man too. He's always low. And he's able to rise up and just put drive you into the ground, and it equals out to six. So, yeah, man, this is the type of guy he is, man. Just over and over and over again. You see him here. So, so I, I, I talked about him having the bad hand placement, right? And you'll see yeah, it yeah. here on this one is a perfect example. So a guy gets lower than him, right? He's not the mm -hmm. lowest this time. And then he just rips through him, just sheds him, throws him to the ground. It makes tackle. So, I mean, that is his, his biggest issue. I mean, you can see it a little bit in not as much in pass pro as much, but it is that that type of thing where if you have your hands like that, and then if you aren't always the lowest guy, like which he's depending on, right? Mm -hmm. you, you're gonna get thrown a toss and shed like that. I mean, the guy gets tackled. Yeah. Get some run stop. All right, so let's get into some uh, pass protection here. You see, he's just, he, I don't know, he just doesn't look like a tackle to me. <laughs> Even with, like, <laughs> everything that's about him, right? I mean, it's kind of, what kind of set is it? It's a jump set, right, man? Is that what that is? I mean, it's not like, I think it's more of a, it's going to be nitpicky, but more of a quick set because he's not aggressive enough. Yeah. He, like, if it was a jerk jump set, he would be trying to get on the guy right now, but more. It's a quick set, which yeah, is better. Like, like if you watch his set compared to the guard, it looks like it's almost the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you can see that the anchor ability right there, right? Yeah. So, well, it, it just it just it just doesn't look natural, right? And here's against Jeremiah Tr Trotter, trying to create across the edge. I thought he did a good job of, you know, of course, all you always have to drive somebody into the ground, but mm -hmm. um. He does. He did a, a good job of staying with him here because you know Charter tries to come inside. Yeah, it's a good job. Right, it's a good job staying with him. So it was loudly <clears throat> without clicking the heels too. Mm -hmm. And here's just abusing number nine again on a uh, RPO. Just more of a run block on this one, yeah. but kind of get the idea of. Uh, it's, it just, it just, he's a guard, man. I don't know how to express that even further, but I really feel like he could come in and play guard right away for the Raiders. And I would feel very comfortable with that. Um, just, just, and he's, he's clean. He's pretty clean in pass protection too. Uh, you see here again, that he's not going anywhere. He's just a strong, strong guy. Um, and he's, he, I think he has quick hands too. I, I think even with the, some of the bad placements, his hand placement is a little bit better. In um in pass pro, it's, it's just you know a little bit better, but it's still a little ugly there. But yeah, should be grabbing the outside shoulder pad like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's <laughs> not at least. Yeah, but, he's not. Go ahead. He's not like wrap, going to wrap around, and, like shooting his hands super wide like he was in the run. Yeah, he, he kind of does it here though, a little bit, a little bit. I see, of course, as soon as I say it. <laughs> <laughs> he won the rep though. See, that's the thing yeah. of college football sometimes, man. Like you're not gonna win like that in the NFL though. But I feel like, yeah. especially when you wrap around like this, this is the, the perfect for a chop because the guy didn't chop. And I don't know if he's maybe he's trying to he's avoiding the chop there a little bit. Maybe maybe you could say that. I mean, he probably could explain yeah. that better than me. But I just I feel think like he was wrap around. Go ahead. I just, it looked like he was trying to ghost rush. Yeah, maybe, but. Like you're saying, in the NFL, Clone Mac takes one step with his outside foot and turns speed to power and puts uh if you're exposing your chest like like that on that one rep. Yeah. And, and uh I did like how he does a good job of recognizing blitzes and stunts pretty well. Uh, I have another clip where it kind of shows where he is lack of handling, handling speed rushers, but see him pick up this sa uh safety right here for the linebacker. linebacker. Peyton Wilson. Peyton Wilson. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Picking up a linebacker, seeing it, understanding the protections. Not a good ball, but <laughs> you see him here picking up this stunt. Does a good job. Sees it way before. 
and does a good job of just right comes inside and he sees it right away understands what's about to happen picks it up well and then it got another drop there from duke they didn't run with this quarterback man but they, they sure did i mean they didn't pass with this quarterback but riley leonard they were passing like crazy <laughs> is he still going to duke uh he's going to notre dame ah interesting all right so so here let's talk about a little bit of the athleticism not to play tackle as much here you can see it's jeremiah trotter right he gives him nice little inside moves jabs inside and he, he basically beats him right to the quarterback I mean, I thought I mean, Charter's not, he wasn't that bad of an edge rusher when I was watching him. No, he's got some skills out there. He's he a good blitzer. Yeah. All right. And then let's talk about here's Charter again on the stunt. And this time he tries to, you know, kind of read it the same way, but he just doesn't have, he just can't, he just can't yeah. catch up to Trotter quick enough here, right? Trotter's able to go mm -hmm. right around him and get a hit on the quarterback. So it's just things like that. Um, that show up on film, kind of why he, I believe he might be there at 44. I don't know what his combine is going to be like. Maybe he shows out in the combine, shows more athleticism, but you see it here too in space a little bit. Yeah. You get him out here on the screen. He just, just, it's just not very, not yeah. the greatest athlete in the world, but he's a lineman. So I'm not going to, I mean, <laughs> I'm not, yeah. not going to draw out his athleticism too much, but you know what I mean. Yeah, for sure. All right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, but that's Grant Barton, man. I, I thought he's a, a damn good player, uh, to be honest. I mean, this line class is full of them. I, I feel like every time I watch somebody, uh, there's somebody else that's a stud. Like the dude from Georgia, the center from Georgia is a stud too, man. And, you know, if the Raiders could probably draft him at 44, I thought about doing him. Um, because they could. I mean, if they wanted to center, I mean, that's a guy they could plug and play and pick at 44. If they, you know, they'll get a quarterback and then get a center for him right away and do those things. I know a lot, a lot of people want to move Dylan Parham to center, but I feel like that's like a consensus thing that we feel like is an automatic thing, but I don't know how automatic that is. Um, but it, it, it would be interesting to see if they, they go after like a center or a guard like this in the second round. But Barton would be an uh, upgrade. I think he would be a, a nice plug and play guy. I think he'll have some hand issues at first and, you know, hopefully don't play Cam Hay Hayward this year. I don't know if they play the Steelers. But, yeah, he'll get baptized by Cam Hayward really early on. Uh, <laughs> but um, – <laughs> and then maybe he'll figure it out after that. But, uh, yeah, I, he's just so strong. Definitely uh, – a uh, a player that you know you could bring in just brings an attitude too. I think that the Raiders want to create. Yeah, yeah. I mean, him finishing those blocks, Antonio Pierce is going to get it, get excited with the, all the all the physicality and him talking about the run game. Yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely yeah. lots of like from him. Like you said, I think the footwork is the kind of the issue. Like all the pass sets that you were showing, like it was all like quick sets, a lot of like jump sets. I'm like, oh, you're are you're already playing tackle like guard <laughs> to a certain degree. <laughs> Like, so I, I can definitely see where that comes from. And I mean, I know at the senior bowl, he was, I think he was scheduled to play center. He was going to mm -hmm. try and play some center. Um, and then he didn't end up going. I, I don't, I know he was banged up last year. I don't know if that was why he didn't end up going to the senior bowl or just opted not to do it. And then mm -hmm. uh, where I was going to go with that too, is maybe he doesn't, maybe he sits out of the the drills too um, at the combine mm -hmm. if he's not hundred percent ready. So unfortunately we might not get to be able to see him as quite as much, but um but yeah, definitely a guy that, at, at the worst case, you can get some uh, position versatility. I don't think, you know, you can't not play him at tackle if you got into a pinch where if you uh, yeah. needed somebody, someone went down that, you, you know, he's a guy that might be able to slide over. But yeah, intriguing, intriguing prospect for sure. But, yeah, man. Yeah, he's definitely not a tackle. It's kind of funny you said that because they, they really did no natural sets, but I think the right tackle did more natural sets than he did now that I think about it because I, maybe they, they knew that he's not, a tackle like that and i mean in college you got to play with what you got to play man you put the best players in the field and play them, yeah. put them where they play right so um yeah so i kind of feel like that man all right uh, let's do some uh, nate wiggins man some nate wiggins going sounds good all right you got me up there yeah good job all right so like i said uh with nate wiggins you know definitely a guy i think that if he is available, if he does end up sliding in the second round, someone the Raiders should be definitely be looking at. If they want to trade back in the first round, I think uh, he could be a good target for him. If they want to pick up more picks and go the opposite route of what we were talking about. Uh, I still kind of like Terry on Arnold over him right now. Um, 
going into this, but let's get into a film. We'll start with the the least sexy clip that we got here. Something that I don't know. Maybe I'm the only one who appreciates plays like this. Uh, maybe me and BD at the, at least because <laughs> not even gonna draw a target. We're gonna see him going up. And I believe that's Keon Coleman, who's projected first round pick uh, uh, for from Florida State. And one thing I like too that he understands is like you kind of see it right there, like where this wide receiver starts attacking his leverage. Like he starts, he recognizes it, starts using his leverage steps, and has the movement skills to kind of maintain that inside positioning so he doesn't get beat and uh, give this receiver the two way go. And on top of it, we'll see this a little bit too. This is what I'm talking about from the get go with his route recognition and like ability to sink. Like right here, I know a little bit of room there, but he's still in a good position to be able to drive and and uh, and at least contest this catch of Coleman if the ball does come. And that's kind of something that you'll see a lot from him. Next drill is going to be a little scramble drill. Our next reps can be a scramble drill. Again, not the sexiest play here, but nice job playing the playing through the receiver's back to go get a PBU. We'll see it better from the end zone view. But again, you can kind of tell he knows where the receiver is moving, sinks his hips there again, and stays in phase. And that's like one of the things I think he might be a little bit better at it than Arnold from the from the clips I watched is a little bit better of. Um, at just saying in in the receiver's hip pocket here, like we'll see it at the bottom of the screen, get a good look at that PBU. I mean, great job playing through the guy's back and breaking up that pass. Um, moving on to a little bit of him playing in the slot, he's going to get a little slot fade here against this. Uh, I think that was technically double China. I ran that a couple yeah. times then. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't even recognize that. We'll see a, the same play call later with him on the outside, but again. Now, I do think he's a little early. Like right here, he kind of starts to play the arms and like, or play the hands a little bit. And that slows him down just a tick because you can see, like, at this point, the receiver's got like a half step on him where a better ball might be in a completion that he can't do anything about. Mm -hmm. But what I like is he never looks back for the ball. He recognizes that he's not in a great position and just keeps fighting and playing the hands to contest that catch and eventually, like, be a part of the breakup. I don't know why I did not catch that. Some terrible He's track. Someone in his hand, hips. He lost the ball. He lost it. Yeah. I feel like that was a dive to me. That's why it was. It was a nice ball, man. <laughs> All right. Moving on. This time he's going to be going up against Johnny Wilson. Johnny Wilson, for you guys that don't know, it's like six seven. I think two thirty, two forty, something like that. Uh, Wiggins was listed at like one ninety five, six two, one ninety five. So giving up about five inches, and you know forty, fifty pounds or so on him. But again, that's what I was talking about. Where. I almost think like the the run plays and the the him struggling at the top of routes that I was talking about at the beginning, like it's almost an effort thing because I mean right here he's contesting and catching against a guy that he's given up quite a bit of size to and holding his own, not really getting pushed around. See it at the catch point on the end zone view. Like another job of like, hey, I'm not back this up a little bit more. I'm not in a great position, so I'm not gonna look back at the ball, but what I am gonna do is get physical. And contest this catch and then two forgot to mention this earlier route recognition comes in play wilson running that little stop and go sits on it and stays on top of it never confused great play that's, right there that's a nice play man yeah he can cover he can for sure he's physical too again for his size again going up against wilson here giving up quite a bit of size getting physical using his hands that time looks back for the ball, looks over the wrong shoulder. But again, we'll see how how well he's able to contest this catch and kind of get into to Wilson's body and ends up forcing it. I mean, this is perfect from a corner, except for the fact that he's looking over his out uh, inside shoulder instead of the outside shoulder. But mm -hmm. like this is what I'm talking about too, where like he's a little bit stronger than I think he he can't or than he shows at times, where he's got Wilson widened towards the sideline where there's not a whole lot of room to be able to complete that pass. And again, mm -hmm. he's always there around the catch point to contest it. Didn't get the PBU there, but at least was able to make uh, Wilson's life difficult. This time going to be going up against Coleman again. Gets a little turned around here. It looks like he bites on this uh, outside stem and a little quick to open his hips, but we'll see it right here. You can see with his hands, you're making contact with the receiver. Getting uh, using his hands to help stay in phase, and then just quickly flips his hips. Mm. I mean, it was like he was never. It was like he was never in a bad position. Almost like back this up again. Like when I talk about receivers having 
fluid or, or uh, smooth hips, like this is the perfect example, like to open one way and then kind of go the other direction and then catch up and be able to be, make a play on, on the underthrow. Get a good view of the ball. Yeah. Boom. Also goes up and high points it. Not quite the uh, graves vertical. No. But good enough to get the PBU. Hmm. Similar like click here. <laughs> What's like 30, about to say like 34 inches, maybe. maybe. Yeah, not, 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 not much, but hey. We'll see, we'll see how he does in uh, at Indy this week. All right, we'll get a similar clip here. Again, receiver's going to stem inside, opens his hips towards the, the middle of the field, and then recognizes the out route, flips him back, and actually ends up running the route for the receiver. Now it's a bad ball, too, but he ends up cutting the receiver off, like right here. Had this ball been on target, he might be able to actually make a pick on it because, again, he's kind of – he beats the receiver to the spot yeah. on that route. So see it from the end zone view, too. <sighs> But again, guy that I think fluid hips can read routes and put himself in a good position quick, pretty consistently. This is Drake May's worst game, too, by the way. This oh yeah, this was this was a rough one for May. If you're a May <laughs> fan, this is not the game to watch. Um, but yeah, all right, so we're getting getting towards the end of it here. Show a couple clips of him co closing. I think this is second and ten, I believe. Yeah, I think that's where the first down marker. And he's playing way off. That's the other thing is I think he's more of an off coverage guy than a press coverage guy. But when you can close like this, you can play off coverage. <laughs> like for a guy that mm -hmm. start is, starts with about 10 yards, at, 10 yards of cushion, 11, because this receiver is off the line. And then he breaks on it from about seven yards deep. And I mean, mm -hmm. gets there right as the ball and delivers a, a nice big hit to erase any yards after the catch. So this one, Marcus, you'll probably remember. I think this is uh, about a little bit more than two minutes left in the game. Clemson's up, I think, two possessions. So uh, North Carolina is looking for a little bit of a comeback prayer here. Again, off coverage, reads the curl route, and then times it up perfectly to go get a pick and go seal that win. So, again, a little bit of a clutch play here. Big situation for Clemson. And, again, just reads the route, has the speed and movement skills to break on it. And then, two, what I like is get it from – What's up? The transition is nice. Oh, yeah. He's smooth. He is. He is. He's got a lot of skills. I think that's what's going to help him out. But the other thing I wanted to pause on, get a little extra style points. We get two feet down, get the left. Ooh, bad timing by me. Ah, let's see. Time. Just missed it. But we can see. Either way, got both feet in. Counts in the in college, counts in the NFL. So, again, some impressive body control to go up and uh, to make that pick on the sideline and get both feet in. So, good ball skills, good instincts, and movement skills. It's just a matter of the effort and uh, how comfortable you are taking a guy that's a little bit leaner and and, and small on the smaller side for a corner. So he doesn't play the run at all, huh? He doesn't because I didn't see any. No, <laughs> no, no. Like I said, man, there was there was one play. I was laughing. He like he's in the box, like because like he was on the tight end side with no receiver. So he's like in the box, right where we saw like Terry on Arnold like setting the edge and like getting physical with guys. He doesn't move, and someone like comes like a tight end comes to block him and puts him on the ground. And he gets up all pissed off. I'm like, yeah, but that's what's gonna happen when you're playing in the box and you don't even move your feet. It is uh, there 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 are not, you're not gonna find many run clips. The only the only great run play that I saw of him. Mm -hmm. actually started with him taking the play off where it was against North Carolina where like he the run was going to his side and like I think somebody like should have had the tackle so he like stops and then the guy misses the tackle and the running back's about to go score and I mean he has the makeup speed to go like make him fumble at the goal line so it was a great ended up being a great play but I'm like I'm not gonna show this or put this on the clip because the only reason why it happened is because you were lazy in the first half of the rep you just made up for it with uh with great effort and a hell of a play but yeah they're he doesn't he's not interested in playing the run he's one of those corners that is going to be a guy that's uh that is more just out there to play the pass um mm -hmm. and, and you know cover so because of that i think he's probably more of a more of your outside boundary type of corner and a little bit less versatile but yeah he doesn't really uh doesn't really seem all that interested in, in getting up in the into the trenches and mixing things up a little bit 
Right. Yeah. Because it's <laughs> funny you just start any clips of him to the flame room at all. And usually yeah. when you break down Corey, you still run clips first. <laughs> yeah. I at least try and get a couple in there. But yeah, it's, this one was was not quite. There was, there, there was Andy. All right. All right. But, I mean, he has great ball skills, though. I, I mean, he has a lot of talent. You can just tell that he's fluid. He's a great athlete. Yeah. I mean, he's going to be able to come in the NFL, hang with the the faster guys. You can tell he trusts the speed a lot. Because a lot of the things that he was doing, you, that's somebody who feels like people just can't beat him deep. Not everybody's going to be able to do that. So <clears throat> I mean, you see how fast he is at the combine. Um, but he looks fluid, man, especially that pick on Drake May. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, was, a, that was a nice interception there. But. Yeah, yeah, man. He he looks like a legit guy. Um, but you know, with these cornerbacks, I, I still think the class overall is a little iffy. You know, um, yeah. Because after these, after Wiggins and like even Kool Aid, who you know will might <clears throat> end up falling too. Um, you know, these these guys had a lot of buzz, but these cornerbacks are just not the sexiest position in this draft. And I, I think defense is going to get pushed down a lot. It's drafts. Right. I think people are going to be running up and taking like there's at least I think at least going to be twelve offensive linemen go first round. I'm saying twelve. That's going to be my un, yeah. over under. I think it's going to be at least that number. In the first, say in the first round, you said. Yeah, I think it's going to be like high or something like that, like ten or twelve. Dude, that's a third yeah. of the picks. <sighs> <Shut up. laughs> I'm just like guards. I'm More telling than a you, third man. of the picks. I'm telling you because it was like Joe Alt, Huaga, uh, Olu. Um, uh, I mean, it could happen. Jackson I, Powers. Yeah, it could happen. I mean, I, I think. Yeah, I mean, it could happen. Like I, just, just hearing that number, I'm like 12 out of 32. Like that's. that's I, a lot. I really feel I, like. Yeah, that, I do feel like this is a very like very much an offensive draft. Like the top end, at least. Like we're like, if you look at the top of most boards, it's. I mean, it happens when you have three quarterbacks who are considered like top 10 guys and four and the fringe being the fourth and JJ McCarthy. And then again, like three more receivers who could be top 10 guys and yeah. uh, all the offensive tackles you were just talking about. But yeah, the cornerback class, I feel like it's like, there's no sexy, like top end. Like I feel like you could probably ask five, five different people who their top corner is and get five different answers. It's like one of those kind of years, but mm -hmm. I do think there is some, like there's some meat in the middle rounds where you can get some solid players, but yeah, it's it's, gonna be, it's offensive line. It's, it's it's an offensive draft all together. That's why I'm like, man, we got to get some of these linemen. We just can't leave this draft with not one of these guys early. Like that, that's the thing. Like the second round, if, if they go quarterback to me, like you have to get somebody like Barton or uh, the dude from Georgia. I can't even think of his name right now. That, that center like Brand? that. Yeah, yeah, Van Brand or um, <clears throat> just some other guys that like the right tackle from Washington. He he's pretty damn good. Um, his card. Yeah, he's he's good too, man. Um, yeah, there's just so many of them, so yeah. they they can't play around with this because uh, the Cooper BB is damn good. I showed him, and the dude's not even doesn't even have he get him in the third round. <laughs> yeah, he's good. He's lost some buzz. So yeah, and I think I think that's the other part of circling back to what we we're talking about and from the jump of like the trade up of like. I mean, granted that didn't have a second round pick in it at least at the very least, so they could they could go back and dip and. Uh, with that 44th pick, but like losing that third rounder, like this year, like that almost makes it tough too. Cause it's like, all right, well now you can't get like a Cooper BB. If BB ends up falling to the third rounder or, or one of those, uh, or take advantage of the depth of this interior offensive line class. But mm -hmm. they do maybe if they strike it in free agency, they can, uh, they can swing the trade. So we'll see. Yeah. That's the big part of it. All right, guys, uh, we're out of here. Uh, hit the subscribe button. We'll be doing the we'll be at the combine this week, so probably do a show when we come back the next weekend. Probably because yeah, it's a lot. We're kind of my, combines work, guys. It's not really another like, hey, let's do it. No, no, it's yeah. just work. It's work all the all day. So um, from networking and working, and so that's just <laughs> the combine is really right. So uh, probably uh, not too many shows this week, but uh, we'll definitely get back to you guys when we get get some draft stuff going. And I uh, had that the news from the combine and what we're hearing and what we're seeing. And, you know, maybe, you know, we can maybe find some stuff out for you guys and uh, get some information out to you. So <laughs> just be on the lookout. And of course, we all, all types of draft content already out there. And then uh, we're out of here, guys. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Wrap. Right. See you guys. See ya.